Welcome to the summary of Security in a Cloud-Enabled World. This is Module 8, and we're going to quickly cover some of the key highlights and, uh, and key takeaways from the course. So we've gone through, we did the introduction and overview. Uh, we've talked about, my, uh, Tim Raines primarily talked about Microsoft's role as a cloud tr provider and, and what it takes to be a uh, trustworthy cloud provider. Um, and then we've uh, spent the bulk of the time talking about that customer responsibility roadmap and, and that overview of everything from strategy, governance, and operationalization to the importance of administrative control and not losing con uh, control of your, of your cloud tenants and, and your on-premise assets. Information and data security and, it's, and how it's important, it's all about the data. And uh, with the caveat that, of course, um, it's all uh, that everything um, else is required to keep that data secure. Uh, user and device security, uh, and, and how important that is, and, and, and making sure that the access points to the cloud assets and on-premise assets, for that matter, are, um, and, and how, how those are essentially the gatekeepers to the, uh, the, the cloud service and security, and, and, the, and the data stored on it. And then we covered application security, uh, including threat modeling, and a, and a quick overview about how to apply that at an infrastructure uh, development and uh, enterprise architecture level. Uh, networking security and, and how that fits in the equation and, and where, that, uh, where that plays in. And then operating system management and middleware security for those IaaS and on-premise scenarios. And then uh, the scope of the fabric and, and physical security. And so we're now in the summary, we're going to cover some of the key points. So as we discussed early on in the course, um, cybersecurity and cloud are two very large major trends. And coming together, they collectively bring uh, some imperatives that um, we need to increase our security rigor at all layers because the attackers are targeting all layers and, and uh, exploiting any weaknesses in all layers. Uh, we're shifting the, the primary defenses as you adopt cloud services and as you find a trusted uh, provider to move your workloads to that uh, trusted cloud, um, you can shift your primary defenses up to those data identity application layers, which really helps align you with the business and, and gets the most uh, business security uh, for your uh, investment. So this is a, a very good thing. It lets you get to those important projects that, that weren't gotten to because you've been uh, focused on commodity stuff. And so moving that commodity to the cloud is, is a very good thing. And that creates opportunities as well. So, uh, you know, transferring that operational and security responsibility to Microsoft as a, or to a trusted uh, uh, cloud provider like Microsoft. And, uh, and there's also the opportunity to embrace some of those uh, Microsoft cloud capabilities for enhancing security, like Azure RMS, Azure Key Vault, um, all those various capabilities that help bring your, uh, your, your overall security posture up and those, those cloud-based services. And ultimately, the way that we frame our thinking, uh, this course is, is heavily based on our Security in a Cloud-Enabled World uh, poster. It's uh, at uh, aka.ms slash secure customer. Uh, highly recommend that you review that poster and, uh, and uh, as, as, as this course's uh, content is based on that framework. And especially that customer responsibility roadmap, which is those eight components. And uh, we're very, very heavily influenced, especially in the operationalization of, uh, of security by the, the NIST cybersecurity framework um, with that, that five phases of identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. Um, very, very useful for, for framing thinking in this, uh, in this world where we have to assume reach. And then when we do, uh, one of the things that my team does um, as a consulting practice is to help our customers assess their, their security state. And this is an approach that you guys can use as well. So each of those principles in that cloud security poster, um, you can uh, perform a self-assessment on your current state and, hey, how do we stand against this principle of strong authentication, of uh, embracing software-defined networking, of uh, applying a containment approach, et cetera. And you can self-assess on that. Um, and then you can uh, ultimately come up with tasks of, okay, well, this is the, the desired end state. 
and then what do we need to do to get ourselves there and to move to that and so that's you know that's essentially applying the same approach that we use when we work with our customers um, for for uh, building a security roadmap um, for adopting cloud services and, and just generally uh, becoming more secure and so it's something that you guys can uh, you can you guys can do as well by applying uh, those principles in the roadmap and seeing where you stand against it and what it takes to, to get to that to that ideal state and just wanted to, to revisit this diagram uh, once more um, and, and, and just keep in mind that there are some things that absolutely, unless you're paying someone to do a managed service, um, you, know, that, you know, you own your data, you own your clients, you own your identities. Cloud automatically gets you out of the physical problem, the, the public cloud versus the private cloud. And then SaaS, PaaS, IaaS is the preferred order um, because if there's a SaaS application, a software as a service application that's already written that does exactly what you want or close enough, 80% of what you need it to do, just go with that because it's already written, it's secured, it's maintained by your trusted cloud provider. And if there is something else that you need that's a, a bit of custom business logic or something that just doesn't exist out there or need for a website or something like that, platform as a service is the next best because you want to only maintain and secure what you have to, which is your code and, 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 the, and the logic and, and, and the implementation of that logic uh, in, in, in there. So you want to minimize what you have to secure. And then, you know, for those existing workloads that you can't quite migrate over, you can lift and shift them to IaaS, uh, the infrastructure as a service. So, you know, recommend pretty much from left to right in terms of uh, from the security perspective, because once you have that trusted cloud provider, you really want to give as much of them, give as much to them as you can, so you can focus on that top, uh, those top three lines, and really get your identity and endpoint and data security right, um, because that's something that. Um, that you really, really nobody else can do for you. And then when we look at prioritization, you want to make sure you're focusing your resources rationally and avoiding that trap of analysis paralysis, of course, and looking at the, the, both the potential impact and the likelihood of, of a threat um, when, you're, when you're identifying whether or not to mitigate it and how much to invest in it. And then as you look at the mitigations themselves, Look at the, your, your velocity, the ability to uh, deploy that option quickly, to, to deploy that mitigation quickly. What is the cost of it and what is the effectiveness? Because we don't want to be spending a half million dollars on something that can then be worked around very easily. Um, so we want to make sure we're considering all of those aspects as we're prioritizing our security investments. And of course, as you get to um, uh, you know, uh, adopting the cloud and, and moving to the cloud, um, we strongly recommend using do no harm as your way of identifying those top uh, potential risks that you would want to mitigate. Uh, number one being the availability of admin interfaces uh, on the public internet and you want to make sure that administrative control is, is, is set up really well. Um, if you are doing IaaS and PaaS, you want to make sure that your intranet and intranet configurations are very well uh, designed and very well implemented, so you don't inadvertently put uh, things on the public internet that shouldn't be there uh, because of the uh, discoverability factor uh, that uh, an, an attacker could discover that fairly quickly. Um, and if you do not currently have um, corporate email or apps that are, uh, that are available uh, from an authenticated basis to the public internet. So if you don't have Outlook Web Access or similar applications like that, um, you, you will have to mitigate the, the availability of user interfaces being available to the public internet. Um, most organizations in our experience, not all, but most organizations already have some form of remote email and remote application access. And so this, this one uh, typically doesn't apply to, to, uh, to most enterprises. And just looking at those final takeaways, the um, cloud and cybersecurity really do force us to think differently. Um, and there's, there's you know, new requirements, but there's also new opportunities. And it really allows us as a, uh, to, to embrace, uh, excuse me, to align security with, uh, with the business and focus our IT security resources much better on, on the, the areas of business importance. Um, people, process, and technology, of course, are critical to success. 
and make sure you're prioritizing pragmatically, that you're focusing first on those do-no-harm uh, pieces so that you're not introducing new risk when you go to the cloud. Um, because there is a set of risk that you, you're probably um, carrying now, and you don't want to increase that. Um, you want to make sure that you're, you're, you're carrying no more than that as you go to the cloud. And of course, admin control is, is the most important thing to mitigate uh, first, because uh, losing uh, control of an admin is like losing control of all your users uh, from a, a potential business impact standpoint. And of course, at the end of the day, it is all about the data, but you do have to secure the rest of the stack in order to keep that data safe. And with that, I want to thank you for your time, thank you for viewing, and I hope you enjoyed this course on security in a cloud-enabled world.